but it's it's certainly something that you you appreciate and you respect. That's awesome. Uh, so why did you move to Miami? Was it for a you know, business taxes or the, the scene, what, what, what got you to Miami from New York? So, uh, it was a combination of a few different things. I had lived in New York for, for four to five years at this point, but I'm from North Carolina. So I didn't necessarily have any, uh, physical ties to the area. I had felt like I did everything I wanted to do in New York for those four or five years. You know, you go to all the, the major venues, you go to the sporting events, you go to the restaurants, you do all these cool things. So that was part of it. Um, when the pandemic hit, New York City changed a lot, obviously. So New York City completely shut down. Nothing was open for a long period of time, longer than basically anywhere else in the country. Uh, so certainly COVID played another part of that. But then when I left, right? So when I was at JP Morgan, you're physically tied to that area. Now you're not tied to anything when you're doing the entrepreneurial route. So again, that was that was point three. And then Miami, uh, I hate cold weather. I like warm weather. That was point four. Point five is there's a totally different vibe down here. And people, people, uh, uh, give a shit all the time, not me specifically, but just people who moved to Miami. And I get it. When I thought about Miami at first, my brother moved down here um, a year or two ago now, and I moved down maybe four or five months after. And uh, I came to visit once and my thoughts beforehand were like, eh, I've been to South Beach. I don't think I want to live in Miami. That sounds hectic. That sounds crazy. Sounds like I, you know, I didn't even really love it when I was there. It was fun, but like, I don't think I want to do that. And then I came and uh, we obviously don't live in South Beach, but we, you know, we live on, on the mainland here in Brickell and uh my whole opinion changed it was just a completely different feeling and uh part of that is the government i think right there's there's certainly local politicians that feel like they're rooting for you to succeed versus other places that i lived and i think that's a huge component um but yeah it, it, it was just a great feeling being around here and we my girlfriend uh and i at the time said we'd give it a year uh, we, my family and, and my brothers maintained a place in New York and we're like, ah, we can go back when we want to. Her family's still up there. We'll see what happens. And we just never ended up going back. So, so we, uh, we ended up staying long-term and, uh, it's been awesome, man. It's been, been fantastic. Every time I go back to Miami, I'm like, we got to move the team out there. Our, uh, it seems like there's new, more and more legislation in California. Like today, this morning, there's a new legislation out that's proposing a 32 hour week work week instead of a 40 hour work week. And to your point, like, uh, I would like to be in an area that's a little more pro business and pro uh, startups because, you know, if a company has over 50 employees, we might have to go to a 32 hour work week, which I know the culture in here, people aren't going to want that and they're going to come in. But uh, it's just crazy that that's actually. Yeah, yeah we, uh, we, we came point. out to LA for the Super Bowl, my brothers and I, and we were joking when we landed, we said, I can't wait to see what 55% of your income going to government facilities gets you out here. Like I thought I was going to see flying cars. I thought I was going to see like the best highways ever and all this stuff. And it was a joke, but it's serious in some instance of like, you really want to live in an area where it feels like the politicians and the people that are responsible for making these legislations and these rules and these laws are rooting for you to succeed right and they want you to be there they want to attract like-minded people to that area and that's exactly what we felt about miami not only from a crypto standpoint i think they i think miami has gotten this narrative that it's like the crypto town and everyone's moving there for crypto but it's just entrepreneurs in general there's there's uh tons of meetups there's lunches there's coffees there's dinners tons of people meeting every day and i think that that is a direct reflection of how mayor shores and other local officials have treated the area they've recruited people to come live here versus the opposite of driving people out and, and you mentioned california uh i think it was last year and now two consecutive years it was the first time there's population loss in california's history right and again major cities are, are negatively impacted in my mind from COVID because you have the op opportunity now to live outside of these major metropolitan areas uh, so maybe that has some degree to it, but a part of this is obviously uh, elected officials, right? And their ability to recruit people to live in their place, in their city. And I think Miami has done an exceptional job of that. Yeah. And it will be interesting if the negative loss, that might be part of the plan for, for, for the LA politicians. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm Cuban and uh, I grew up going to Miami a lot. My, my mom's an immigrant of uh, Cuba. And so she's such a fan of, of the, of you know the, the both the uh, mayor and the governor DeSantis and uh, just you know going coming from you know oppressed people in Cuba, Miami is like the exact opposite. It's pro business, uh, pro freedoms, and and we love that.